So you really want to move roaches in? Well then, hey, let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to Joe Daddy's far Feeder Farm. Today we're gonna to start with Doobie Roaches. We're gonna talk about a quick, easy setup, nothing expensive, it's just to get started. Remember, it takes a mature, or actually a nymph to grow to maturity and be able to have babies for six months. That's how long it takes to get to maturity, not so much to be able to have babies. So it's gonna be a process when you start this. So you gotta know you cannot pull from your colonies until you're up and running and you can sustain the pull from it. So remember, it's a patient thing, especially with Adobe Roaches, and that's why they cost more than a lot of other things. So let's get started. You don't have to go and get these big buckets at first. If you're gonna do that, your roaches are never gonna meet. It's almost like online dating. You have to make sure that you're meeting at a nice, tight, close, intimate spot, like at a cafe first. And then you can grow from there as the birdie bunch goes along. <laughs> Let's talk about sex, baby. All right, so we want one to three ratio, and some people will even go one to five. So I wanna be able to keep the males from fighting each other and eating the other offspring, and I'd rather keep them happy. So I go one to four. All right, guys, there's the male right there. He reminds me of like a Dracula. See the coat? It look, almost looks like a coat. Long, long wings. Here's the female right there. Short wings right there. Look at that, nice and shiny. And don't worry, for you guys that are scared of flying Insects, they don't fly, they can glide. But every time I throw them at birds, they don't fly. No, I'm just kidding. No roaches have been harmed or injured in the filming or playtime. Keep them small, keep them intimate. Wait, I feed them the dragons. <laughs> they get injured all the time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Remember, they like to be on top of each other. It's not a big deal. They don't need much room. You can totally take your time and let them grow out of a container. Don't go big at first. Go small, okay? That being said, this is all I'm gonna need for my startup. I got egg crates, right? I got oranges or an apple or a carrot. These are the things that you're gonna need. Look, optionally, you can have water crystals in there. Um, I started doing water crystals at first, for me, I've decided not to do water crystals. Anytime I have a synthetic material inside my containers at all, or, or feeding any one of my animals, I worry about that. So that's why I like using natural stuff. Also with the water crystals, for me, I was having a hard time with, with the bugs going in there and, and making a mess, stuff like that. And I know other people have great success. And one thing I'm gonna tell you right now, push pause, boop. Joe Daddy, check out right here, is remember there's a million ways of doing things. You have to find out what's good for you. Remember, this is a hobby. Anytime you're with a hobby, you have to find your passion and you get creative and you figure out how to do things. Again, we're trying to create an atmosphere that these bugs have lived in for thousands and thousands of years. We're just grabbing them from nature and putting them in here and, and trying to, to recreate the environment. So again, Figure out what you're trying to breed. Today's doobie roaches, they love temperatures that are high. So you're gonna look at like a minimum of like 75 to, to 90, 95 at the high side. Anywhere in between there's great. Closer to 90 is the more breeding you're gonna do. So again, at first keep them small, just like isopods or anything like that. Keep them in intimate containers before you go on to be big. Don't grow too big too fast. You'll stunt your growth of your colony. Here we go, it's gonna take me less than five minutes. I'm gonna throw these in here, boom, boom. What I wanna do though, is see how they're standing up? I want them standing up, because what happens is, when, when the roaches come over here and they start eating, they start pooping, which is also called frass, don't worry about cleaning that off, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, for some of your neat freaks out there, don't be cleaning out your colony too much. Leave that frass on there, or should I say roach, roach poop? It's poop and the little bugs like to eat it. So leave it there, let them eat it, lots of nutrients in there. Don't be too clean with these guys. So you don't have to worry about cleaning them up. Your colony you most likely have some cleaner bugs that come with it. They always hijack over and there's no way of getting them out of there, nor do I want to, because they're gonna do a great job for the colony. They'll eat some of the, the dead ones that come up, and again, you're always gonna have dead ones, don't worry, unless you have a mass like tragedy, like everybody's drinking the Kool-Aid kind of thing, uh, then you got something going on, okay? So again, look, 
All you're doing is give them hiding places. This container is actually a see-through container. I probably would go for a darker container or spray paint or paint the outside or do something like that. But this is what I had and I wanted to show the importance of just start the colony, okay? So, boom, you got them all in there. Now what do you do? You can either take some carrots, I like to slice them down, or take some oranges, I'll put them into fours, and I'll put them on one in each quarter so that way they can get to it. They don't have to worry about going, going too far for them. Um, again, the food is going to give them moisture and they're going to give them nutrients. Now, you can use a, a grub, like they call it a chow, right? Roach chow. I made my own roach chow. Um, I actually got my mixture from Northern Exotics. I want to throw a shout out to them. They taught me so much about how growing this. Dude, I love you guys over at Northern Exotics. Keep it up. And so, again, I'll, I'll leave a link down below in the comments uh, to his video to show how to make a chow. Okay, so now that you got that in there, that in there, that's it. Again, if you're gonna put it in your house, put it on top of your uh, the top of your cage. Or if you're gonna put it in the garage, make sure you, you might have to have a heater. If you live in a certain state that gets freezing cold, um, definitely gotta get a heater. Remember, put it on the bottom. Again, if you have one of those bigger containers, you've grown to the bigger container, and the keyword there is growing or grow in to the bigger containers, then put a heating pad on there. You wanna take that heating pad and put it right under the right under the egg crates because that's where they're gonna live. And if you're really checking the temperature and seeing where it is, the middle of the crate is where you want it to be, the, the, the 80 or the 90. If you put it at like 85, by the time it gets to the bottom, it's probably at 90. Remember, they're gonna move around to where they're most comfortable. If it's too hot, they're gonna move to the other side. If it's too cold, they're gonna move over closest to the heater. But on for a small thing, again, keep it above your, above your enclosure. The heat from the light is gonna give it enough heat. So you're gonna be just fine, okay? Again, water crystals are optional for my setup. You can do you. Remember, you do you, boo. Okay, vegetables. You, look, a lot of people give them carrots and I'm guilty of it too. But you know, I started looking up to them, they're fruitivores, so they love fruit. The more fruit you're gonna get in there, the more they're gonna be uh, thriving. A lot of people say that they have sex a lot more or they made a lot more. You know, that's not scientifically proven, but again, their makeup, the way that, they were made is they love fruit so why not give them what they want so fruit it is and again i don't go buy fruit especially for them i got four kids in the house and they're always like biting the dang apple and then they'll put it down or they'll take two bites of an orange and then lay it down it'll end up on the floor or they'll get kicked around a little bit look don't throw it away put it on a plate chop it up give it to the roaches they're used to it they don't mind it being kicked around on the floor guys this isn't an expensive hobby but it does take time carrots stuff like that again don't try to stay away from lettuce for me there's no nutrient nutritional value in lettuce unless you're a turtle or you got a turtle because turtles have such a long digestive tract they can pull a lot of that nutrients out of there i will do a, a really really in-depth one on a bigger colony i have i have three colonies here i'll do that but again for the new guys for the people just getting into it to feed their own stuff please start simple don't go big don't get into this too much you got to take your time because as you grow with it you're going to learn so much more and lisa i told you i'd give you a shout out girl that's for you this is a small setup i will do a big one uh do a big one later and i'll mark you in that as well all right guys well this is joe from joe daddy's feeder farm if you like what you like hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up Get me up there on that list so more people can watch. And remember, leave a comment down below. Once I hit 100 subscribers, I'm giving stuff away. I love to give stuff away. Check out our website. Peace, guys. Never live in the box people are trying to put you in. Love you. Hey, Richie, I know you like to clown around a lot, but don't be clowning around with these roaches. They don't like to be bothered. Leave them alone. Don't mess around with them. You know what I'm saying? Maybe feed them two or three times a week, but ultimately, don't clown around with them.